Accepting payments in Google Forms is not built in. Fortunately, there are four ways you can collect payments when you're using Google Forms. The most important thing is to understand the advantages and disadvantages of each of these methods before you can choose the one that will work for you. Whether you're selling tickets for your fundraising event or you're selling your handmade scented candles, join me here in this four-part video series to explore the four different ways you can add a payment link to your Google Form. At the end of this first part, you'll learn how to do two things. How to add a PayPal link to your Google Form to let your customers pay, and how to include a specific fixed amount to the PayPal link that you want to collect from your users. Before we start, introducing Elaine, a small entrepreneur from the Glint Candles, who tried all these different methods to collect payments with Google Forms. Five weeks ago, Elaine had a successful start with her handmade scented candles business, the Glint Candles. She makes personalized scented candles for $20 each. As soon as she started her business, she quickly put up a Google Form to take orders. The form starts with one type of candle, the exquisite coffee bean candle. She then provides three options for fragrances that our users can choose from. And finally, the form asks for customers' emails. All the candles are made to order, so she must be paid before her work starts. She turns to Google, wondering how to accept payments on Google Forms, and finds a useful tip. It says that she can insert a PayPal link that's linked to her PayPal account on her Google Forms confirmation page. So, after her users fill in her Google Form and press Submit, the order would reach Elaine, and simultaneously, it'll show a PayPal link for them to click on and they can make their payment. Knowing how easy it is to use PayPal for online shopping, Elaine's convinced that this is a great method to collect payments. Moving on, Elaine logs into her PayPal account to get a personalized PayPal link for herself. She creates one with the name of her business. Now, to add the link on her Google Forms, she refers to the instructions on how and where to add it. So she first opens her Google Forms, and then she clicks on Settings. Next, she selects the Presentation tab, and finally, adds a confirmation message along with her PayPal payment link. That was pretty simple, so now she wants to test it for herself and see if it really works. She opens her form in preview mode and then types in her email address, name, and chooses her favorite fragrance, hazelnut coffee. And once she submits the form, she sees the confirmation message displayed along with her PayPal link. Next, she clicks on the link and it opens in a new tab to show her the PayPal payment page. Huh, it shows the amount as zero dollars. So it expects that the user would need to enter the amount before they can proceed for a payment. She's a bit worried here. Will her users remember to enter the correct amount? She really doesn't know. So that's a problem. After going back and researching if there's a way to set a specific amount in the PayPal link itself, with some luck she finds a great way to do this. She finds that the trick is to add the payment amount at the end of the URL with the currency code, so her URL now looks like this. With the new URL, her users would directly see the amount filled in, so they can just go ahead and pay. She's really happy to have it set up in her PayPal link. After receiving many orders in her first week of business, Elaine finds something quite interesting. To her surprise, there are fewer payments than the number of orders. Also, there are some payments with different amounts. That's right. She isn't receiving all orders in $20. Some of them paid $40 thinking that they wanted to order two candles, and some even paid less than 20 how is she going to consolidate all her orders and payments? You see, there are three major problems. Some of her users who submitted the orders did not complete the payment process, so they didn't pay her yet. Secondly, some of her curious users were able to change the amount on the PayPal payment page, so she received the different amounts. And lastly, 
The biggest problem is matching the customer with their order. She's not able to correlate the email IDs on her form with the PayPal IDs her users paid with. She could go and ask her customers one by one who paid with which ID, but then again, that would be super inefficient for her business. While she's happy that her business is a success, she's also pretty stressed because of this payment issue, but she's not ready to give up yet. By now, you've seen how Elaine used her PayPal link in the Google Forms confirmation page and how it led to some unexpected results with collecting the payments from her users. I'm sure you've realized how hectic this is for Elaine to consolidate them all and follow up for missing payments. Could she find a solution? Sure, let's talk about it in the next part of this video series on how she got these three problems solved. Watch part two of this video series to fully understand how Elaine found the best way to make her users pay before they submitted the form. And more importantly, how she managed to dynamically calculate and include the order total to her PayPal link. See you there.